Okay, so here we have a basic setup with two planes. And if I go ahead and just push this one backwards, and you can see that I get uh, a hole as expected. A little bit of debris there, but no problem. Just clean it up. And then we've got a nice hole through our surface. This is the basic sort of behavior that we're trying to encourage. Now, of course, once this is in the program, I can use it all the time along with dynamic remeshing to get lots of nice changes here. It just sort of happens however I happen to be manipulating the surface. Boom, you know, topology change, no big deal. Um, and so this allows a uh, user to very quickly model surfaces, freeform surfaces of arbitrary topology as if they were playing with clay or something of that sort. So here we've got a triangle soup plane. All the triangles have been broken apart and jittered, and there are a couple missing. Above is a cylinder, and if I just grab this cylinder and plunge it downwards into the plane, I get a result as if the plane were solid. Um, this is a nice feature of our method that it can work so at least some of the time on triangle soups. So here we've got a ground plane and a couple spheres, and I want to show how if you just go ahead and stick this sphere into the ground plane, you get something much like a union. But an interesting trick we can do is we can take an object around and put it underneath the ground plane. And now if we go ahead and let's just center that, um, we can bring this object up through the bottom. And when we do that, we get something similar in behavior to a Boolean subtraction if we had brought it through the other side. So this is a nice little improvised behavior that we can put together once we have topology change running in our system. So to do our due diligence here, we will mangle up the Stanford bunny. Um, here, I'll show how we can take this plane and simply by dragging it through the head in the appropriate way, we can encourage a deletion of the head. In effect, this gives us a way of using a plane literally as a clip plane to view into the model. Note that the presence of holes in the bottom of the bunny was no obstacle to this action, nor was the uh, open boundary on this plane. So uh, something else interesting to note about uh, the move or grab tools here is that they are path dependent. So if I slot in this plane, you can see that that doesn't uh, cause much to disappear on the surface of the bunny. But if instead I were to take this plane and scrape it into the bunny's back, well then that will open up a hole. Okay, so right here we've got two sheets, and I'm going to demonstrate this paper mache trick that we discovered. So if I just go ahead and get my grab brush here, and I can go ahead and sort of show you what that does. Okay, so I can grab the surface and pull it around. Um, and the trick here is going to be to try and pull these through each other in a nice way like that that gets them to join. Um, and now that they're joined like this, I can go ahead and start smoothing, and that'll take care of the rest. And now I've got one nice continuous sheet, and I can continue sculpting and manipulating this sheet as I see fit. So here you can see uh, Mr. Potato Head modeling system set up, and we're going to go ahead and grab this nose and just add it in by dragging it in there. A little bit off center, but none the worse. Now we can go ahead and add these hands in as well, just by sticking them into the body. Um, we can also go ahead and add these feet here. If we just drag it in and release, then that will attach it as desired. Now one really nice uh, detail of having 
these actually be connected instead of just, uh, you know, separate interpenetrating pieces is that we can go ahead and start smoothing out these connections here. Maybe make this a little bit stronger. So here, you can see that repeatedly applying the smoothing will make these connections nice because we've actually formed proper connections in mesh. This is great. Uh,